So hello everyone. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to set up the Source SDK so that you can start making mods for the Source Engine. I've decided to make this series because a lot of the YouTube tutorials that I've seen on Source Engine modding are very old and outdated. And I've recently gotten kind of interested in making Source Engine mods. And I just wanted to provide sort of instructions for people who are new to it. I've been messing around with it sort of for the last few days and I've managed to get it to work. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to get it all set up so that you can start making your first source mod. One important thing about this, one disclaimer that I should mention is if you're not very familiar with C++, I would maybe learn the basics of C++ before getting into source engine modding because you're going to be messing around with C++ code. And if you don't know what you're doing, it's going to be a bit more difficult for you. So yeah, just I would say you can probably learn the basics of C++ in a week or two if you really try. And then once you're, you've done a couple of programs, you're a little bit comfortable with C++, maybe come back to it. And then hopefully you can you know learn to better your C++ skills as you go along and as you continue modding. And yeah, I would at least learn object-oriented programming in C++. Anyway, with that disclaimer out of the way, let's get into the tutorial. So first thing that we're going to need to download is this Source SDK 2013 single player. The most recent SDK for Source Engine that was released publicly by Valve was the 2013 version. And so that's the version that most mods are going to be running on nowadays. And all of this is basically on GitHub. So you can find all this on GitHub. On Windows, we're going to have to install the Windows JIT installer or Git installer, whatever you prefer to call it. I'm going to do it for x64 because my system is a 64-bit system. So just download the, the installer here and then open up the installer. And then go through all of this. I've already done all of this, so I'm not going to go and redo all of this, but just go through the installer and basically click yes to all of that stuff. Once you've done all that, you should hopefully get this window here. JIT bash. If you go into the search bar in Windows and if you search for JIT or Git, you'll find it and it'll be here. Then what we're going to want to do is we're going to go want to go to this page here. I'll have this linked in the description down below. And you're going to want to copy this this command here. Now, what we're going to want to do here is we're going to want to use the CD command to change our directory. That's what CD stands for. We're going to change our directory into whichever directory we want to use for our source engine modding. Normally, I use the documents directory on Windows, but in this tutorial, I'm going to use my desktop because I already have the files there in the documents directory and I don't want to override them. So go here to desktop and then just basically copy paste this in so just go and hit paste uh, on windows you'll see some weird extra like symbols here that you don't want you don't want these symbols here because otherwise the command is not going to work so just use the arrow keys to go up through here and just delete those symbols and just have it like this exactly how it's written here in the wiki so then go ahead and clone that it's going to do all the cloning and that might take a while depending on your internet speed because it does have to clone this file it's pretty big all these files are pretty big yeah that's what we're going to do alternatively if this doesn't didn't work for you for some reason if this method is not working for you you can also download the zip archive of the source engine However, as the wiki says, you'll have to manually update the code. You'll have to re-download a new zip file every time the changes are committed to the repo. Yeah, everything here is now cloned, so it should be on my desktop now. As you can see, it's here on my desktop. If I open it up, then I get all of this. And what we're going to want to do next is we're going to want to go in a here and in, into the src directory. The next thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to want to go and install Visual Studio 2013 Community. Now, unfortunately, Visual Studio Community 2013 has been discontinued because of how old it is. Microsoft no longer offers an official download for it anymore, but there are 
basically archive downloads where you can find the ISO file. Like here it says on the wiki. So just go here to download.microsoft.com. And depending on your browser, you might get an issue here. I'm just going to keep this file anyway. Just ignore the security warning. This might take you a few minutes to download, but basically it's going to be a file that is for Visual Studio 2013. So just wait a few minutes for this to download. So once you've downloaded Visual Studio Community 2013 from the link on the wiki, you have the file here, just an ISO file, so just double click on it, open it up. I dragged it to my uh, desktop by default. It'll probably be in your downloads folder. So just open the file up and wait for it to open. And just when it gives you the security warning, just go ahead and click on open. You should see something like this, basically. At this point, you should just be able to go here. Now, I already have it installed. If you don't have it installed already, it'll give you the option to install it here and go through all of that. I have it installed, so I'm not going to mess around with this right now. But just go through the option to install it, and it'll take probably a couple of minutes, depending on your internet speed, to go through all of that and download everything. Now, once you've installed Visual Studio, just go and search here. It should show up Visual Studio 2013, and this should basically be it. It should pop up. You might also get a pop up telling you to sign into your Microsoft account. You don't have to do that initially. There should be a button that says sign in later, although you may have to sign in eventually to uh, your Microsoft account. So, you know, make sure that you have a Microsoft account just in case you have to sign in at some point in the future but you can ignore it and press the button sign in later for the time being. So now that we're here in Visual Studio Community 2013, what we want to do is we actually want to go back to our files from before where we copied the source SDK. We want to go here and I believe according to the instructions we go to create game projects.bat so find the file that says create game projects, double click on it, it's going to open up this command line thing, it's going to generate all the stuff that it needs to generate for Visual Studio 2013. Might take a minute to do, so just be patient while it's working. And after that's done, you should see this game solution here, and you should basically just you can close this for now, but you can just double click on this and it'll open back up in Visual Studio Community 2013. Now we're in here. So now what we need to do in here is we need to just wait for it to finish parsing all the files in the solution. Once that's done, we need to basically just select the game solution. We need to also switch here from debug to release, I believe. Yes, so we need to go and change it from debug to release. Then we need to right click on the game solution and you're going to want to click on build solution then that should go and it should start going through the whole thing and building all of this yeah basically this might take a minute for for it to finish building all of that but once it's done building and hopefully you don't have any errors you'll be able to use all of these files and, and modify them so building will take a while depending on how fast your computer is this may go faster or it may go slower for you, depending on how good your processor is. Anyway, just wait for it to finish, and then we'll go on to the next step. Okay, so now that that's done, hopefully you had this output here that, you know, the build succeeded and you got everything up to date there. So once that's done, you can basically close Visual Studio for the time being. I want to go back to your um, source SDK folder which hopefully you have dragged somewhere or... anyway open it up then go into game and then go here into the folder mod hl2 then drag on all these and just press copy for now to make sure that everything went well uh, i would go also into the bin directory and hopefully you have this in here this is the important stuff 
if everything went according to plan in Visual Studio, if everything succeeded, you should have this client.dll and server.dll files here. These are very important files, so make sure that they're in there. Now, as I said, just copy all of this, or you know, copy everything that's in the mod hl2 directory, all of this, and then go to this PC, program files x86, scroll down to Steam, and then go to Steam Maps. Now once you're in Steam Maps, you should see a directory here that says Source Mods. Go into Source Mods, and I already have a mod thing here, but to make a new mod, just create a new folder. I'm going to call it my second mod. Then paste everything that you copied from before. And basically, you should have everything in here that works for you. So all of this stuff is basically all the important files and everything that you need for your mod. Now, if you open up game info here, you'll see that it tells you everything that you have here. It's a default configuration file basically for the mod. It says my first HL2 mod, and you can change this. I'm going to change this to my second HL2 mod, mod tutorial. You can change this to whatever you want basically, and yeah, all of this stuff is pre-configured for you, but the Valve developer wiki tells you how to change all that stuff if you want to to change it to your liking and hopefully you'll get good at doing that so anyway and i'm going to save and i'm going to exit so the next step is to make sure that we have this source sdk base 2013 single player installed so to make sure that you have it installed open up steam and then go up here you should go and select tools and then it'll show you all of the tools that you have here so just scroll down until you see the source tools and we're going to be using single player for this tutorial series so just install that once you've installed that go to properties and then go over here to betas beta participation and select upcoming upcoming and that's it that's all that you need to do here so make sure that you have that installed Okay, so now what you're going to want to do is go back up to your source SDK 2013 folder, go into SRC, and go down here to the game solution. Double click on it, it'll open up Visual Studio 2013. Then go over here to where it says client in the solution explorer, right click that, go to properties up here, make sure that all configurations is set, then click on debugging. And here, when we go to command, what you're going to want to do is click on this arrow here, then go to browse. And now what you're going to want to go do is go to this PC, local disk, program files x86, Steam, Steam apps, common, and then source SDK base 2013 single player. And then go down here and click on this hl2.exe and click open. Now go over here to command arguments. I'll have a link hopefully to the wiki page. But basically just copy paste this. Copy this. Go here. Control V. And now I'm going to change the name of this to directory where I have my source mods stored in. For me that's in the source mods directory. If I go over here this is my directory here it's in the source mods directory and then my second mod so what i'm going to type in here is i'm going to go to the very end and put source mods is there now so i'm going to put my second mod and you can change this to wherever you stored your mod Although I do recommend, like I said, you should store it in the source mods directory on in Steam apps here. So just make sure that the right directory is in there and then hit apply and then click on OK. And now you should hit F5. It's going to ask you if you want to keep debugging, click yes. And now, as you can see, my mod pops up. I haven't really done very much other than change the configuration file. 
So as you can see, it says my second HL2 mod, mod tutorial, which I changed earlier in the video and earlier in this tutorial. So yeah, that's how basically how you get Visual Studio working and how you get the mod to basically pop up. Then just go to quit and quit game to exit out of there. If you want to go back, like I said, always hit F5 and then yes, and then it'll go back in. There you go. So the next thing that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go ahead and install this Hammer++. Hammer++ is a community-made version, a mod to the original Hammer editor. Hammer was a source engine editor that Valve made. Basically, it's used for mapping all the stuff in the source engine, so all of your mapping is going to be done in Hammer or in Hammer++. I'm just going to be using Hammer++ because it adds some quality of life features. You're going to be here at the index page when you get to this website. Just go to download and then go scroll down here and download it for the source SDK 2013 single player. So hit download here. Go here and you can extract all. Then just go into the file here. And what you're going to want to do is you want to go inside of this bin folder, copy all of these files copy them and then you're going to want to go back to this pc local disk program files x86 steam back to steam apps then common and then in here and then go into the bin folder and just copy i mean just right click here and click on paste i'm not going to do that because i've already done that so all of my stuff is in here already then basically once you've done all of that, you'll be able to open it. You can just go and um, click on the Hammer++ EXE. It'll say select the game configuration to use. I'm going to just go with Half-Life 2 for now. Yeah, this will be basically the default editor. You can go to New to go and do that. If you go on the source, the wiki from Valve, basically you can go and read all about how to do mapping in Hammer. But I'm also going to be showing you how to do that in later episodes. So that's the only other thing that you're going to need installed besides Visual Studio to make all this work for now. Okay, so that's basically it. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial on how to get all of that set up, how to get everything that you need to be able to do source engine modding and mapping for the source engine. I hope that you enjoyed. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like on this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to watch more episodes in the series. And that's it. Thank you very much.